Hi everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to get creative with some of the things you can get from BB Craft. Now what I received from BB Craft is on a video that I will that I have uploaded previous to this one and it shows you in detail each thing as I opened them and discovered what I had received. But I will be using those products. This is a four millimeter round glass frosted beads. I'll be incorporating some of those. I got some metal beads and they are four millimeter size and they come in several different colors. I got some of those and then I'm going to be using the cabochons that I got from BB Craft. They come in a little package like this and there's 15 of them and um, like I said, you can look at that previous video and see everything in detail, but I'll be using some of those. I'm also going to combine some of the things that I got with some of my own things so that I can get creative. So I'm going to be using some 24 gauge wire and you can use art wire. Mine happens to be silver argenti wire. I'm going to be using it. And um, you may want to have some jewelry glue on hand. I have this Aline's jewelry and metal glue. I like this the best. It works really well. And some stringing wire. This is some Beetle on 7. And some cording. This is one millimeter cording. And then um, we'll just go from there. I'll just show you the different things we're going to have in our um, designs as we do this. And these are the projects we will be making. So um, I will show you how to wrap a cabochon like this one. I'll show you how to wrap it pointing down and pointing up. And then we will do a couple of projects with them. And that will be what we will do today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to wrap one of our little cabochons. I have picked the black one with the gray little dots on it here, or spots, whatever you want to call it. And I have cut 24 inches of 24 gauge wire. It doesn't have to be exactly 24 inches, but pretty close. So just get your ruler and measure it twice, and then bring your wire together at the ends like so. Uh, I'm going to back off just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now I have both of my ends here together at the end, and I'm just going to slide my fingers up, kind of lasso this until I can find basically the center of my wire right here. And then I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm just going to cut the end off so that I have two straight pieces without a loop. If you cut right in the middle of it, you just get two hooks that you have to cut off anyway. So just cut it straight across. And then we're going to bring these two wires together again on either end and then here again and find the center one more time. So put the two ends together and then find your center the best you can. Now you're going to need some round nose pliers, some chain nose pliers, and some wire cutters for this. You can also use some nylon nose pliers if you have them. You're also going to need a little piece of masking tape or anything that's comparable. So I have this huge old roll. I just cut some little pieces and stuck it on my tripod like this so that I can have them available. You only need one if you're only going to do one cabochon. So then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. Now you can use some baling pliers, some coiling pliers, something like that if you want a bigger bale. I am going to use my round nose just because most everybody has those, not everyone has these, but if you want a bigger bale, if you're going to put it on something larger, you're pendant on something larger, then use one of these or something a little bit bigger to wrap it around. I'm going to use the very end of my round nose pliers where it's the largest and then I'm just going to squeeze these wires together like this around them. 
and then I'm going to take it off. Put my pliers back in to straighten them up, and then I'm just going to go to the very ends of the circles here. Let's get you a little closer. And I'm going to use the tip of my pliers just to kind of bend it out to make more of a circle, like so. So as you can see, all I've done is just draw those sides in and create a better circle. Now, hold on to those loops and straighten out your wires best you can. You can take your nylon nose pliers and just gently, because you don't want to pull your circles out, this is 24 gauge wire, it's easy to mess it up, just pull it out. The way my wire was wrapped on the spool kind of kinked it a little bit, which is irritating, but that happens. Now that you've got your loops like this, you're going to go to the end of your wires, pull them together, and cut them all flush. I got these pretty close, but I'm still going to cut them flush. And then I'm going to grab either a 6 seed bead or one of your little metal 4 millimeter rounds, either way, and slide this on all four of these wires and just slide it all the way up to my loop that I created. Instant bail. Now, I'm going to grab my wires and separate them gently, trying to keep the two central wires together and the two outside wires I will pull separately. So I have to determine which wires are central and which wires are to the outside. So let's see. Okay, so now as you can see, let's get really close for a second. As you can see, this wire is on the outside, this wire is on the outside on this side, and these two wires are central. You want to arrange them like this, otherwise this next step will not work well. Now, hold on to your bead and your bail, and bring these two central wires up, like so. And then bring your left wire behind, and then your right wire over the top of it and behind those two top wires. Just like that. Now bring your central wire, the two central wires. Try not to um, cross them. But it truly doesn't matter if they get a little crossed. Bring them down and then bring your left wire over the top and then your right wire over the top. Arrange them and make them nice and neat. Now you want this to be rather tight so that um, this is nice and neat. This is just basically kind of a braid or chain look that we're doing. You want each one of them to be fairly is the same size as you do it. Now as you do this, your top is going to get a little bit out of shape here. So you can put your round nose pliers back in periodically and arrange them. And then, again, once you've got these nice in position, bring the central wires up. Bring the left or the right wire over. It doesn't really matter which order, just as long as you crisscross them. And then bring your middle wires down. And then do it again. Nice and neat. Check your bail, put it back together with your round nose pliers. Gently, you don't want to mar your wire all up. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be basically in the right spot. And then bring the middle and then down. And when you've got several of them done, check with your stone to see what size you've got. Now, you can either place it down or up, like this. I'm going to show you with it down first. So, I'm going to place this right where my bead, I'm going to move it up to the bail, my bead is right 
on the top of the um, cabochon and make sure that my braid comes all the way to the end and it does not so I need to make a few more of my braid so I'm going to bring the middle wire up and go underneath bring the middle wire down and go underneath bring the middle wire up and down now let me check this and you can just see it, I've just kind of created a chain now I'm going to place this on here and you can see that my braid is right at the bottom of that cabochon so that's about right now if you want to you can um, hammer this a little bit to flatten it if you'd like. You don't have to, but I'm going to show you how in case you want to. You have to be really careful if you use a 60 seed bead in doing this process because if you hit it with your hammer, you're going to break it and you're going to have to start over. So what you want to do is just lay this on your bench block or whatever smooth surface you have. Now, you can use either a rubber mallet or you can use your chasing hammer. I'm just going to use my chasing hammer and I'm just going to gently hammer this. I'm going to move my bead off here, the edge, and just gently hammer. You don't want to flatten the, it like crazy because if you do, you can break your, your wire because it's laying on top of the other wires in the braid. And if you smash it too much, you can break it. So, just enough to where it kind of flattens and stiffens it and make it pretty. If you'd like, you can hammer just lightly the bail. Don't get too carried away with it. And like I said, if you have a 6-0 OCD, be, be very careful. Okay, okay. So I've arranged my wires to where my two central are straight down and the two side wires are straight out. Then I'm going to take my cabochon and I'm going to place it upside down and I'm going to make sure that it goes right to the end of my little chain that I made. I'm going to take the top of this and kind of move it over the top of my cabochon, just like so. We get you close. So I've just kind of pushed this forward instead of it being behind my cabochon, it is now on top of my cabochon. And now I am going to turn this over, try to central it the best I can, and grab a piece of tape and put it right on that chain. Turn it over, see how you're, like so. Bring it down just a little bit more. Now I'm going to cut the extra tape off. I don't want it to be around the edges, I just want it to be on the back because we're going to wrap around the edges a little. We don't want to catch our tape to where we can't take it off. So I'm just going to lift this a little bit and cut it. piece of tape stuck to my scissors won't come off there okay and then on this side I'll push that back down and then on this side I'll just clean this up a little bit make sure that everything is centered nope I have a nice decoration on my kind of matches my bead here or my cabochon okay Just arrange everything really nicely. And then we are going to start by taking one of our side wires, pull it up tight, and bring it across the bead and hold it tightly. Pull on the wire and go around the bead on top 
of the cabochon between the cabochon and the bead here. So you want to go around the wire that's holding that bead and just pull it tight and then just bring your wire around the back and leave it there. Now grab the other side wire, pull it over the top of the cabochon very tightly and then go around the bead again like so. Now I'm going to back off just a little just to make sure I stay in camera. Now we have our two centrals. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the central one or the the middle one here straight up and we're going to go around the back of the bead and wrap it around until we come to the back again. Then bring up this one go around the back of the bead and wrap it. Now, it doesn't really matter if you go to the back or the front with whichever ones you want. Just make sure that you do both of them the same. If you're doing a central one around the front of the bead, then do the other central one around the front and so on. Move your wires around to make them look good. I'm going to push the bottom of my cabochon down on the hard part of the table here because my bead mat isn't hard enough. So I'm just pushing this down against the table. And arrange your wires till they look pretty. Like so. Now I'm just going to finish wrapping the top by let's get you a little close so you can see by um, wrapping these wires so this wire I'm going to grab this wire down here it's on the very bottom it's coming out in this direction I'm going to start to wrap it and continue wrapping it until I don't have very much of the wire left and then I'll just stop at the back of the pendant like so. Then this is my next wire that's closest to the bottom. It's coming out in this direction. So I'm going to wrap it just above the last one I did and just wrap. Doesn't have to be a perfect neat wrap. It can be a messy wrap. Once you get done with it, there's just a little left. Park it in the back of the pendant. Now, this one's coming this way, but this is the next one in order. So I'm going to take this one, it's coming around this way, and I am going to continue wrapping it in that direction. Let's see, I'm loosening the previous one, so let me park it back there again. And then I'll continue with this one. And then this one, and you don't have to use the whole thing, you can use as much as you want. Just make sure it's secure. This one I'll bring in the direction it was coming out and bring it around. And finish it in the back here. Now I'm going to cut these wires off. Now each wrap you do is going to look a little bit different from the last, and that's okay. This one on the bottom isn't quite as pretty as some of the others I did, and I'll show you. They're all going to look a little bit different. Now you want to arrange your wires until they look pretty. Go back here where you've cut these off short. Oops, let me back off. And then begin squeezing those little tails down. I'm using my needle nose pliers and I'm just gently, you can just use your chain nose pliers, just gently push them. And then touch them and make sure they're not rough and gently push them. Like so. Now I can kind of push that wire in a little. Just doctor it up a little. Get your wires the way you like them. 
doesn't look too bad. Then take your bale. I'm going to use my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to turn it like so. Now it's this way instead of this way and it'll hang properly on my um, chain or leather or whatever I decide to put it on. And I'm going to take the tape off very gently, take the tape off and central your wrap or center it I guess I should say. I don't really like the bottom of this wrap. It's just not as pretty as some of the others I've made, but each one is going to be a little different, and I'll just keep arranging it until it looks good. That doesn't look bad. Now, you will find with this wrap, it wants to slide around. So you're going to take your jewelry glue and be very, very careful with this part. I get it. I've got it on my brand new manicure. I got it on everything. So I'm not really happy about that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my wrap just slightly to the side. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the back of the cabochon here and up towards the top. Then I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to make sure it looks good. You're going to get it on your fingers. Everything's going to be all weird there. Then I've got it centered just the way I like it. I'm going to set it aside like this and let it dry. Now if you'd like to, you can add a little bit more glue. This dries clear, so it's really not a big deal to put some right over the top of the chain here. It's the back of your cabochon anyway. And if you get too much and you don't like the way it looks, you can clean it up with a little razor blade, exacto knife, um, something like that. Just kind of scrape off the excess. But just let that dry. We'll just set it aside. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to open your bale. If you want it open, all you have to do is take something, put it between the two wires, and open your bale, like so. That kind of spreads it out and makes it prettier. You can leave it closed also. Now see, I'm, I'm not glued yet. I should have waited, but I wanted you to just see how to do that. I just messed up my glue. All right. Before I mess this up any further, make sure it's central now. I'm going to set it aside, quit messing with it, and let it dry for a few minutes. Now, you can see I have made several of these bales. These I made down with the cabochon down and this one with the cabochon up. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare another piece of wire and I'm going to do it exactly the same way um, from the beginning, just the same amount of wire and everything. And I'm going to braid it and I'm going to come back and just show you how to wrap with the, the pendant down. So I'm going to use some of my gold wire I'm going to cut 24 inches of it, fold it in half, cut it, fold it in half again, make my bale, and then I'm just going to slide on a 60 seed bead. Since I have this color, I'm going to use it. This is just a um, round bronze colored Toho 60. So I'm going to get it to that point, and then I'll show you how to arrange okay, it. So I have prepared another piece of wire here. And um, I have my two side pieces out, my two bottom pieces down. I have my two side pieces crossing out over the top. Makes it a little bit better. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to arrange this one to where the pointed part is up towards the bead here. I'm going to put it on my wire and just kind of push this. This is a little harder to do on this end. Just kind of push this up over the tip as much as you can. 
bring it forward like so so that it's just in alignment with the tip of the bead and it's not behind the tip of the bead then turn it over it's harder to keep this in alignment then grab your piece of tape and put it on that one's a little big. Let's see if I have a smaller one. And you'll have to arrange it a couple of times. Now this wire is a little bit different from my last wire. It's 24 gauge, but it's a little heavier. So each wire you use can be a little bit different than the previous wire. That's okay. It works fine. Cut this. Now, <clears throat> when we wrap this, and just like with the one we just did, now you can see that this wrap is different than these wraps. Now, what I did and why the bottom looks different is when I crossed, when I brought it over, I I did not cross and then go around my bead. I went straight up and then behind my bead. So the way that you wrap is the way that you're going to end up with the look of the wire on the front of your cabochon. So you can try several different ways. This is pretty and um, this is pretty. So either way, but I'm going to show you the, how to get this kind of look. It's going to look a little bit different. It'll look like this, but I'm going to show you how to do that on this one. So any way that you wrap these is is fine. You can do it any way you want. It's all going to be pretty. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to bring my wire up, across, and behind the bead. Now this is going to move more. Here, let me get into camera here. Let me back off a little. This is going to move more now because you've got the tip here. It's just a little different. Bring it up as tight as you can get it and go around that bead. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring this one over and go behind this one. I may be doing the same thing I did last time. I don't know. <laughs> I, every time I wrap it, I wrap it differently. So there's no particular way that you have to do it. So I brought it up tight, kind of put my cabochon in the middle of it, here, in the middle of my wrap, and I'm just wrapping. And do it tightly. Now I wrap that one around twice just to give me a little bit more security. Now I'm going to bring this one up. This is a central one. And I, let's see, how did I do it last time? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to bring it straight. And I'm going to bring it around. Like I said, it's really, it doesn't truly matter how you wrap it. Um, you're going to get a different look each time. Pay attention to what you're doing. Decide if you like it or don't like it and do it differently the next time. Then I'm going to bring this one up, wrap it around. Turned out to be a pretty wrap, so I'm okay with that. This is very versatile. You can do it a billion different, well, not a billion different ways, but you can wrap the wires around differently. And like I said, with this one, I got a kind of a straight up and down look. With these, I got more of a crisscross look. With these, I crisscrossed them even more. So um, you can do a bunch of different ways to wrap it. Just figure out how you like it and wrap it. I have a tendency not to do anything the same. I'm just wrapping these around just like I did on my last cabochon. Don't want to take a lot of time with this because um, I don't want to 
want the tutorial to be too long. So I've just wrapped them the best I can. Keep them as tight as I can. And I want to go around one more time with this long one. Okay, now I'm ready to cut these off as close to my wrap as I can. Straighten out my wire wrap, centralize it, center it. I don't know why I can't get that word in my head, but it's a little bit more work trying to keep your wrap on the tip than it is on the bottom when you do it upside down, so. Continue tucking them in a little bit after. See how pretty that turned out? It looks really nice, like so. And as I said, each wrap is going to be a little bit different than the last. I was evidently bringing up my central ones first and wrapping them around. Or no, I was bringing out the the, the um, outside and bringing them around the middle. It's just hard. It just, I think it depends on how you end your chain. If you're coming over the top or over the bottom of the the central wire how it ends up when you start to wrap it so that kind of makes a difference i think because i was wrapping it basically the same but i got a different result so i'm thinking that it's the central one that's a little bit different i did these last night and these today and sleep sometimes changes everything so anyway um that's what this looks like I'm going to go ahead and glue it gently. Now you don't want to move this off so much. So what I usually do with this, because if you move it off, you may not get it back in. So what I do with this is I just kind of inject the glue around it. Um, I'll just put a little bit up here. And then I just kind of put it underneath like this. Put a little bit on the top. You can kind of squirt it underneath that bale you made. And then just leave it alone and let it dry. I'll take in the rest of the wires and open my bale after that dries. And you can see, see this one? You can see after the glue dries, it's really not that bad. It doesn't look bad, it's, it's okay. This one, because it's black, and because I just did it and it's not completely dry yet, you can see it a little bit more. But it's really not that bad. It doesn't look bad. Same with this one. This one I put more, but that was my first one I did. And then with this one, see, you don't really see it. And it does help hold it in place better. Okay, for this one, I'm going to show you how to use one of our wrapped cabochons, and then I'm going to incorporate some of the other stuff I got from BB Craft into this particular design, and a few things of my own. So I have a couple of size 2 crimp beads. They're just regular Bilon size 2 crimp beads, and I have two of those. And then I have this long um, noodle type bead or um, just a long tubular bead. You can get these probably on BB Craft site too, but you can get these in hobby stores wherever. It's just a long noodle bead. And I am going to use it as part of my focal. I'm going to use one of the big lobster claw clasps from BB Craft. I'm going to use the bright silver color. I got a bunch of these little beads from BB Craft in one order and um, all together 
is what I meant. And I'm going to use the bright silver color of these little metal beads. And then I am I got this nice little kit of frosted four millimeter round beads. I'm going to use the black and the teal color here. And um, some, I'm using some Beetle On 7 stringing wire. And I have cut about a little over 20 inches. You're just going to want to measure on your beadboard from the 10. Just loosely measure from the 10 to the 10. It's not cooperating with me right now. But on the very last row is where you want to measure. I am going to make, let me show you, on this very last row, I am going to make about an 18 inch necklace. So I have cut myself around 20 inches, maybe a little bit longer than that, just so I have enough room to do my clasping. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to start your necklace. And then we'll string it a little bit and then we'll do the focal. So we're going to start with the piece of wire, one of the crimp beads, and the lobster claw clasp. Let me get you in here. You're going to need a crimping tool for this and just a regular size crimping tool. There's mighty crimpers, micro crimpers, and just the regular crimper and that's what I'm using for this. And I'm just going to pick up my crimp bead onto my wire. I'm going to drop my toggle down. Then I'm going to pull my wire through the toggle and just give myself enough room to work with. I'm going to push it through the crimp bead. Then I'm going to pull the long wire so that I don't use up more wire than I need to. I'm going to pull the long wire and move my crimp bead up until I have a nice little loop around my um, lobster claw clasp like so. You want some movement in your clasp so don't make it so tight, the loop so tight that it won't move around, but don't make it really big either. Just make it enough to where you have some nice movement. Then just straighten out your two wires. Make sure they're not crisscrossed inside the crimp bead, which is really easy to do. So just try to bring them side by side. And then I just hold them a little apart so that they stay parallel, like so. And then I grab my crimping tool and on the second divot here, closest to the handle, I put it centered on my crimp bead, like so, and squeeze. And now you can see there's a wire inside this side of the crimp and there's a wire inside this side of the crimp. So it basically makes two little tubes around the or two little tubes around the wire and an indentation in the middle of the crimp tube. Then you're going to go to the top divot right here on your crimp tool. Turn that crimp bead sideways like so so that the two tubes can now be squashed together. And you have a nice crimp. Now there's a little flat spot here at the very tip of my pliers. I am just, or my crimp tool, I'm just going to use that and give it one more squeeze just to make sure it's nice and secure. And that's a nice tight crimp. Now I'm going to start with some of my um, crimp beads, or not my crimp beads, my regular beads. And I'm going to start with a couple of the silver beads. And I'm going to bring a couple of these little silver metal beads down to my clasping, like so. And I'm just going to slide them over that extra tail of wire. And then I'm going to cut that wire, if I can find my little cutters here, I'm going to cut it right at the top of that bead right there. That gives it a little bit extra security and yet it won't stop you from being able to put your beads on nicely. So I just slide it over and then I'm going to begin a pattern and I'm just going to pick up three black beads and I'm going to pick up a teal bead 
and a silver bead and a teal bead and then three black beads and I'm going to just continue that pattern until I get to the center of my um, necklace and I will show you how to measure that and let me go ahead and string some more and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so on my really beat up beadboard, I've used this thing for literally years, it's just a mess, but I have laid out my design from the nine right here on the outside, on this outside little divot. Um, because I want my necklace to be 18 inches. So right about in the middle of my clasping, I have laid this down. And then you can see here, I have went ahead and strung all the way to the one because I'm going to string this tube on next. So I want it to be centered so that I can put my pretty little cabochon on that tube. So I've strung to here. I'm now going to put on my tube, drop it down. I'm going to move this ugly beadboard over here. Someday I'll get another one, but it served me well. And now I'm just going to take my clasp and I'm going to put it on the wire and then slide it over this tube bead. So the main thing you just need to do is make sure that when you're making your bail on your cabochon, it's big enough to fit over your tube. Now I'm going to continue with my stringing. So I'll just start again with the three black beads and continue all the way to the end. When I get to the end, I will then put a jump ring on the end, which I didn't add in my um, supplies when I was showing you, but I'm just going to use this closed jump ring and you can use an open jump ring, that's fine, just as long as it's a nice, big, strong, sturdy jump ring and it will fit okay in your clasp. So you want to make sure you open your clasp and make sure it fits on there nice. So I'm going to go ahead and continue stringing my design and I will be back and show you how to clasp it. Okay, it. now as you can see, I have finished stringing the second half of my necklace exactly as I did the first half. Now I have a symmetrical necklace and I can do my clasping. I have dropped my crimp bead down onto my wire here and I'm going to pick up my jump ring and bring it down. And then I'm just going to slide through the crimp bead and the first two silver beads. All right, I got one, that's good enough. As long as you get one, and you don't really even have to go through them if you don't want to, but I always find that it gives a little bit more strength to the clasping. So now I have, you get you closer. I have run the wire through the crimp bead and through the first bead, and I'm going to now adjust this side of my clasp, the loop, make sure I have enough movement and make it about the same size as this loop. This loop's a little bigger, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just by pulling on it a little bit. And then once I've got it set, I'm going to grab my crimp pliers. Make sure there's no slack in your necklace. A tiny bit is okay, but you do not want a lot because these beads need to hold tight against this focal. So on this one, you don't want a lot of slack. You don't want your beads moving around a lot. So then we're going to go into the second divot on our crimp plier, making sure our wires are not crossed. And I'm going to pull that a little bit tighter there. And I'm going to crimp. And then I'm going to turn my pliers to the side and crimp in the first divot. So now I have a nice little crimp. It's nice and secure. And then I can just cut this wire off. Now I have a video called bead stringing basics if you'd like to watch that more about crimping and um, it'll show you in more detail if you feel like I went through that too fast but um, you can always reference that video this is now a finished necklace 
and I have used all of my little supplies and just added a few of my own and made a nice little project. Okay, we're going to continue with getting creative with the stuff from BB Craft here. So, I also got this package of big hole gemstone beads, and there are several of them in here, as you can see, all different. They pretty much match the gemstones that came in my cabochon package of 15. So, I grabbed the rose quartz and the rose quartz cabochon. I've wrapped it exactly like I showed you before. And then I am going to also use one of the big clasps that I got from BB Craft. I'm going to use a closed jump ring, two smaller open jump rings, and two fold over cord ends, as well as two four millimeter hole wide beads like this. They're just little cute beads that have little hearts on them. And we're just going to make a really quick project out of this. So I've cut a piece of two millimeter cord wire excuse me, leather cording, and I've cut it about 22 inches long, not quite, and I am going to just slide on to my leather cording, my cabochon, and I'm going to center it, like so, and then I am going to pick up um, my one of my wide hold beads here, and I'm just going to slide it down, I'm going to put both cords in it, like so, and I'm going to slide it down. And that you can tighten nice because it's about a four millimeter hole. These are two millimeter, this is a two millimeter cord, so doubled. It fits in there pretty good, and I can tighten it nice and make a nice loop around my pendant. So you can see, like so. And then I'm going to pick up my gemstone and I'm going to slide it down right to that bead and then I'm going to pick up another one of the white hold beads and slide it down. Just put both of your cords in there. If you have an issue do one at a time. Well, okay. There we go. I'm going to slide it down. Do it gently so that you don't mar up your cording. Like so. And now I'm just going to separate the cords and I have a really nice focal right there. And now I'm going to grab a fold over cord. I'm going to use my crimping, crimping tool, but first I'm going to take some flat nose pliers and I'm going to get you in close here. I've got my leather in here. You can put some glue in there if you'd like, but I just make a mess with glue. So I'm just going to tighten this by squeezing it together just a little bit around the cording so that I can hold it together nice. And then I'm going to grab my Mighty Crimpers. If you do not have a pair of Mighty Crimpers like this, then you can just use your flat nose pliers. But I'm just going to go in the first round divot here. I'm going to fold it one side down. Like so, and then I'm going to fold the other side down. And then I'm just going to use my crimpers to shape my cord end here. So I can keep pushing it in here until it folds down nice. And then I can continue squeezing it and making it round. Like so. And if you have your flat nose, it works just as well with flat nose. You can do the same thing. Just shape it and squish it with your flat nose pliers. Push one side down first and then push the other side over the top of it and then just squeeze it and, and shape it. And down here is where it has some little jaws. If you can see on this one, it has like a little 
jaw sticking up, a little tooth sticking up, make sure that you give a nice squeeze and round that area because that's going to poke into your leather and hold this on here nice. And that way you don't need glue. And that's on there good. I'm not going to get that off, so you really don't need glue. And then I am just going to open one of my open jump rings. This is about a six millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to slide it on to my, um, my little end here with a little loop. And then I'm going to pick up my clasp, drop it on. And you might want to pay attention to um, having the front of your cord end on the front of your necklace too so that the back of the cording is where you crimp it together but if you do it neatly enough it doesn't really matter then we're going to put that on there and just close these and that is my end here I hope I was staying in camera there. So that is the end of that. And then I'll go ahead and do, see if I can do this cord end here with the flat nose. So you can see how to do that. Just going to hold it. I'm going to squeeze it just slightly together. These fold overs are a little bit big for a single cord. I should have probably got one of my smaller ones out, but that's okay. Then I'm just going to push this side down. Then I'm going to push this side down. And it's a little harder to do with the flat nose, but you can do it. Now I've got that side down. And now I've got that side down. And then I can just shape it. See, so it turns out prettier with the crimp, but it still works with your flat nose. Now I'm going to go ahead and shape it this way. But if you don't have a certain tool, you can make other tools work. Like so. And then I'll just open my jump ring and put on my closed jump ring. So I'll open this one, slide this on it, and slide it on my loop on my cord end. And then I will just close it. From side to side, you open and close your loops from side to side, twisting them. Never pull them open because then they won't close properly. You'll just distort them. So now there's the end. And let me show you. Now you have a nice, pretty necklace. And just when you wear it, it'll lay just perfect, just like that. So. There's another project that you can do if you just get a little creative with your stuff that you get. And I've got another cabochon ready here. And I've got the gold colored big lobster claw, claw clasp. I've got a big, this is probably about an eight millimeter jump ring. And then I've got like a 10 or 12 millimeter, probably 10 millimeter open jump ring here too. You don't have to have this one. But I've got it just in case. I'm going to make a purse charm out of this. So I've got my cabochon. And with this cabochon, after I made it, I did not turn the um, bail. I just left it flat. This is how you start and then you turn it. Just leave it flat like so. And then I'm going to just slide my open jump ring onto it and then slide it onto my lobster claw clasp, and then I'm going to close it. Now you don't want to put your cabochon directly on the clasp. You have to have 
something in between so it hangs correctly. So let me grab another pair of pliers here and I'll just close this. And now I have a cute little purse charm. I can just hook that on the hardware on my purse. Now if it doesn't go on the hardware, if the hardware is too wide for your um, little lobster claw clasp to just link on there, you can use another big jump ring or a piece of chain. You could even just slide a piece of chain through it. And like this, you could use your piece of chain, put it on here, wrap it around your purse, strap or whatever you want, and then put it back through here. And then you have, this could also go on a keychain and be a really nice little thing. Of course, I'd use a gold chain, but I don't have one right here. So you could do that, or you can go ahead and put on another jump ring and then connect it to the hardware on your purse. Close it and you have a nice little purse charm. So that's an easy little project to do also. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more design idea for the cabochon. And um, I've already wrapped it and separated my bale and turned it um, this way instead of flat. And now that this is prepared, I am going to make a focal on a necklace with it with some chain. So just any chain that you have will cut a couple of pieces and they'll probably be about six to eight inches long each. Um, more than likely about six inches um, each. So about a foot of chain is what you're going to need. And then you're going to need a piece of your 24 gauge wire. And all I've done with that is I've cut seven inches and then I just kind of curved it with my fingers. It doesn't have to be a perfect curve, just curve it and we're going to adjust it in and out as we work with it. So 24 gauge, you can just mess with your fingers like this and just make a little curve. And this is the artistic wire again that I am using. And then we're going to use some of the four millimeter round frosted beads. And then I've got two bigger beads. Now you can use anything you want. This is lapis and it's eight millimeter round. Lapis, lazuli, and sodalite basically are the same stone. It's just that the sodalite has a lot more white in it. So this lapis is really going to highlight the blue. So I am going to use two 8mm beads. You could also use 6mm beads. Anything that's a little bit bigger than your 4mm and your 3mm that you're going to be using so that the, bead, that the pendant doesn't roll around. They're going to be kind of stoppers. So that's what we're going to need. And you're going to need your round nose pliers, cutters, and straight nose pliers. And let's go ahead and start with the round nose pliers and our piece, our seven inch piece of wire here. So, like I said, I just kind of curved it with my fingers. I'm going to kind of open my curve. I want it to be kind of wide like this. And I'm going to come to one side of my wire and I'm going to go down about an inch on my wire and I'm just going to bend the wire over my round nose pliers and then I'm going to turn my hand and put the, the bend the plier into the bend that I just made like so and then I'm just going to bring the tail of wire that I created over my pliers like this and then I'm just going to turn my wrist again and complete the circle by bringing the wire underneath the pliers. Then I'm going to take the pliers out of the circle. I'm going to grab onto the um, loop that I made with my chain nose pliers. And you can do this with your fingers or you can use another pair of pliers and just grab the end of the wire and start gently turning it around the long length of wire. And you only have to do that once or twice. 
Just make sure you have a nice, neat little wrap. I'll show you what I've got. And, and that it's secure. And then I'm going to cut this off. And then I'll just use my chain nose to make sure that there isn't a sharp little tail sticking out. Just tuck it down. Such tiny wire that you just kind of have to be gentle with it so you don't bend everything out of shape. So all I did was tuck down that little piece of wire. Let me back off because I will get out of camera. I probably already did. And now I am going to start stringing some... Um, beads onto this piece of wire. And it just depends on how big you want your focal. If I'm probably going to, because I need to wrap again on this end, so I will just um, make a few inches here of, I'll probably go to about here with my um, beads. So just depends on how big you want your focal to be. I'm going to start with a couple or one silver bead first. I'm going to pick up one of these three millimeter round silver beads. And then I am going to pick up some of these frosted beads. So I'm going to do like three frosted beads. And then a couple of silver beads. Whatever pattern you want. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Just whatever pattern you think that you want to create here. Those two are stuck together for some reason. Let's get a couple more here. And then two more silver. And so I'm going to do a couple more little sets till I get to the middle of my wire and we'll be okay. back. So this is what I've done. I've done three sets of three beads with the two little silver in between and then I'm stopping with two here. Now I'm not completely centered because I need to leave some room over here to wrap. So I'm not going to completely center myself here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this big bead here and I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to grab one of these little silver beads maybe. <laughs> okay. Grab a silver bead. Slide it on. And then I'm going to grab my pendant and slide it right over that silver bead that I just put on. And it should just kind of center right over that. And then I'm going to put back on another one of my big beads. And you see how that just makes a perfect little centerpiece right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and string this side exactly like I did this side and see how much wire I have left to wrap with. It's kind of a, you just kind of have to play with the amount of wire you have and the amount of beads you want to put on as you do this. As long as you end up with a centered effect, then you're fine. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this side. We'll come back and wrap this up. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't give myself a whole lot of room once I finished my design to wrap this end with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide off these beads from here and I'm just going to have one bead here instead of two and then I'll slide back on my big bead, my silver bead, my pendant and my big bead and then I will repeat the pattern again and see if I have enough room. So that's how you can kind of judge what um, length you, for what length you cut and what you've got left from your, after doing your loop, you can kind of just put your beads on, arrange them, and see what you've got left. You could also lay it out on your beadboard and measure it if you wanted to, and that would work too. But usually, I just kind of put it together and see what I need and then modify it from there. So I just wanted to show you what I normally do as I'm designing. And um, 
go ahead and just play with it a little bit and see what you come up with. I'm going to finish this side and be back. Okay, so that's a little bit better. I can work with that. So now I have strung it all together, got it the way I want it to look, and I'm going to put my round nose pliers right at the very end of this bead, pushing everything together on this on my design as I do this. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of tension against this bead and then I'm going to just bend this wire over the flat nose pliers. Now you notice I'm not very far down on my pliers. Now I'm going to roll my pliers up so that the resting the front portion is resting in the bend of the wire I just created. And then I am just going to make sure I'm positioned pretty much the same place I was on the other side. And I'm going to bring my wire over and then I can turn my wrist and bring this wire down and wrap it in a loop. So this is what you should have. So you can just wrap it around your round nose pliers. And see if your loops are about the same size. And it's pretty darn close. I can put my round nose pliers back in and just make it a tiny bit bigger by just kind of sliding it down my round nose pliers. And that really won't distort my circle. So now I'm going to hold on to my circle that I just created. I'm going to move my tail parallel with my pliers and then I am going to wrap a couple of wraps. So I'm just going to bring this down around the wire like so. I'll bring this one around a little bit more just so it's towards the outside. And then I'm going to cut this off and tuck with that little tag of wire that's left down with my chain nose pliers. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to take your um, little circles and straighten them out so that they are flat against your um, bead mat. Not turned this way, but turned this way. And then just make the shape you want. If you want it wide, make it wide. If you want it more curved up, make it more curved up. And then you're going to measure it on your bead board. Let me see if I can get this in here. I'm just going to measure it on the bottom portion of my bead board. I'm just going to put the um, cabochon center and see where I want to be. I want to make this up to about the nine. So I will cut a piece of chain from this three here to the nine, so about six inches, right here. And then I will cut another one exactly the same size. So I'm just gonna take this off. I'm going to make myself two equal, equal lengths of chain. You can either do that by measuring it um, perfectly against each other, making sure you have all your lengths or you can count the links and make sure you have the same amount. I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces and we'll be back. Okay, so I have cut my equal pieces of um, chain. Now you can either grab, a, since this is a small chain I'm using, I could grab a jump ring and hook it from the necklace loop into the chain loop, opening and closing it, or I can open this chain and put it directly on. I'm going to see how easily I can open this little chain and stick it on there. Let's see. These little tiny pieces of chain sometimes get me. So I'm just gonna open a link, and I'm going to put it on to the, um, loop on my necklace. You see that's just so tiny that my pliers are getting in my own way. So if you want to, if you have a small chain like I do, use a jump ring or just um, you can manipulate it on there. I am getting it. I just it's a, just a pain. Or you can use a bigger chain of course. That would be easier too. 
So there I have put my chain on my loop. I'm going to put the other side on and then I'm going to get a couple of jump rings and a toggle clasp and finish the ends. Okay, so as you can see, I have put the chain on this side and put one end of my toggle on by using a jump ring. So I've got a couple of jump rings out and I'm just going to open my jump ring, let me get you close, by twisting it open. You can use two pliers or you can use your fingers like I just did. If it's not a really strong jump ring, you can do that. Then once you have it open by twisting it, you're going to slide it onto the last link on your chain and then slide your toggle clasp on. And then for this part, I will grab a flat nose and I will just twist it shut again. And I shake them a little bit just to kind of harden the wire a little bit and set it so that it stays closed nicely for me. And now I have a finished necklace. So I can kind of play with it and see if I like the way it looks. And you can make this portion a little shorter also. So that looks pretty darn good there. And then um, I will show you another one I made. So this one. I made it more curved up so you can curve this up more but this one's longer than this one I think let me see yeah not too bad so you can curve it up as much as you want or you can curve it out as much as you want of course it's gonna stretch out as you wear it just to um, accommodate your neck anyway so this one I did with the copper colored little beads this and this one I did with the bright silver and of course it came with gold and, and uh, platinum and a hematite color so you can use almost any color you want if you get that package of those beads and um, this one I just put some copper chain on a little bit heavier chain I used some check and I think these are 8 millimeter also they should be yes so I used some 8mm beads, 6mm beads would work too. You could use a couple pearls. You could use anything you have in your stash. And then just um, string up a cute little focal like this. They turn out really pretty. So that's what I have done with all of my cabochons today. I have made several necklaces, a purse charm. This is the other necklace here. And I also, I made a few others that I didn't show you. I made this one with one millimeter leather. I said in the beginning we were gonna use one millimeter, and I did, but the one I showed you was two millimeter le leather. So um, this one, if you like this style, I have a necklace that I made on my beginner's channel also that um, shows you how to make this knot. So basically I just, slid it on with a little bead with a 6-0 seed bead and made the knot and then put a couple beads and made a couple more knots and then I haven't clasped it yet but I made it so I could put a little bit of chain on the back just wrap some wire around the leather and that's how I did that one so there is um, several things that you can do with these necklaces and like I said, if you like this style, just reference the necklace that's on my beginner's channel that I posted like two weeks ago. It should be at the top of the channel. So anyway, that's what I have done with my bead haul. Um, and here's the one we wrapped here. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye.